These are the adventures of SV Prism. The crew on board are looking to experience new cultures and new landscapes as they sail their 33-foot cutter beyond horizons. So we've been out for about 10 hours, 10, 12 hours. Wind started out really light. Like, actually, wind started out not to be existent out of Ensenada. About an hour out of Pije Toto Santos, we uh, hit some air, so we threw up uh, our drifter and our main. We had that combo pretty much for the whole day when we wrapped around St. Thomas. We pulled out the whisker pole and went wing on wing for a while. Sail's been pretty good so far. Wind then picked up to about 15 knots. For some reason, I thought San Quentin was San Jose, the anchorage. And I was like certain on it. And when I went to like show everyone what I was talking about, I couldn't find it. We decided that we're gonna just push on through to San Quentin. And uh, the only problem with that is at our current rate with this wind, which is blowing probably still about 12 knots, 12, 13 knots right now. It is dying though. Stop tapping. Whoa, that's why it's getting a little rolly. But the only problem with that is we're going like still five and a half knots. We're still hauling ass with just the main up. We are gonna get to San Quentin like around like three o'clock in the morning, which is a hair early to anchor in a bay that you don't really, or where you're not familiar with. We're actually hoping for the first time ever that the wind will die down a little bit to slow down our boat so we can kind of just drift to San Canteen. So that's what we're doing. We're uh, having Captain Hour, which consists of tequila and squirt. Shannon's having a beer. Sean over there is, I think, having the same thing as me. Yep. past this rock that awfully San Martin. It's kind of in between us and San Cantin. The nickname for it is Ben's Rock. I don't know why it's called Ben's Rock, but I'm guessing that if Ben was, I'm guessing Ben was quite unfortunate. That's why I got the name after him. It's a, it's a rock that's only visible at high tide, it's, it's only a couple of feet out of the water. So, you can really look at the chart good to make sure we're not getting near that at all. I've altered course quite a bit to give us some wiggle room because I know Mexican charts, the, the Mexico charts, can be a little offset. Generally, that's easy to uh, figure out if they're offset or not because you just run the radar lay the radar over the uh, chart. So this morning the radar decided that it doesn't want to turn on. So I guess we're doing it the old fashioned way. I don't know about you, but I think it was pretty obvious that I was freezing last night. <laughs> we're not used to the cold, nor do we want to keep around it. 
It was pretty chilly last night. The cockpit full of blankets and sweaters is pretty good indication of that. Coming into San Canteen, um, first have the right chart in your chart plotter. That helps. Um, it shows a lot more detail. And then um, make sure you give it a wide berth. We're, we're pointing, um, we're passing Point Entrada here, and there's submerged rocks that have breakers. And we're in 27 feet here, so just uh, really circle it, and you'll see uh, two very dark mounds. Those are the rocks that are on all of the charts. So we've made it to our first uh, Mexican anchorage, um, San Quentin, or if you're a stupid white guy, you say San Quentin, but San Quentin is how you say it. And it's gorgeous. Oh, thank you, Shannon. Look at the perks of not being. Uh, generally, our breakfasts are either fish and rice or chorizo and eggs on tortillas. Today is something special. Does that not look yummy goodness right there? What is that called, Shani? Tortilla esp espon Española? Española. Mmm, looks really good. He's so cool. Hi. <laughs> I wonder if they let him in the strip clubs. <laughs> hey. Wow, he's super nice. Like total like Galapagos animal right there. Yeah. Doesn't even know what to be afraid of. Horny toads. Sean's looking for surf. So far, the swell's just not very big today. So he's just trying to piece something together to make this hike worth it. Other than that, it's beautiful around here. If you like California without people, this is pretty much it. Uh, it's flipping gorgeous. Oh, uh, you know, there's swell, just not a like a discernible wave. Only one wave I saw was the left going off this point, the reef, and uh, Shannon was quick to point out how uh, perfect breeding ground for elfin seals or sea lions, whatever's out on that little island. So, yeah. Kind of sharky. Probably pretty sharky. And uh, the quality's not that good. It's not really worth the risk. I mean, if it was barreling, I'd be out there. Sean just caught his first wave behind me, and he rode it for, he got up perfectly fine, rode it for about, uh, I'd say about six seconds, then, you know, ran out. 
but the gnarly part was him trying to get back through the surf. That was a good set. And I mean, he got pummeled. He's still getting pummeled. He's still not out of the surf yet. I thought he was out, but looking back now, he's still getting his ass kicked. Call it a canteen uh, lighthouse left. <laughs> started feeling a little bit like uh, dinner time out there. Yeah. All these seals. <laughs> they all start, all start up. popping up. Like, all of a sudden there's like five or six. I'm like, well, they must be looking for food. And then I'm like, and then somebody else is going to start looking for food too. So no, it was fun. It wasn't the best to surf, but had a couple rides. It's good. We found a, a like abandoned tent that was kind of someone's home, I think, for a little bit. Probably was just like a fisherman's outcropping, or someone had a painful death here. You know, one of the two. I'm gonna go with surfer. the fisherman or the surfer that just kind of didn't want to clean up after he was done. Shannon's tearing up our books accidentally. She's trying to fix the Charlie charts because it's like an old school spiral thing and she tried to pull it out from underneath her cookbooks. But anyways, back to the back to the real thing of the story. Sean's over there looking at, he's cross-referencing our uh, cruising guides to his um, surfing guide. We've decided after looking at the weather um, that we are gonna have to kind of divert from the original plan, skip out on Bahia Vascaneo just because of um, there's some wind coming in and all the anchors in there are just kind of marginal at best. You don't want to be in there when there's big surf and if there's not big surf, there's really no reason to go there to go surfing. What is that? Is this too stressful? Oh dude, I'm stressing out big time. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's almost <laughs> captain's hour. You know, if I could... <laughs> If I could read, it would probably make it a lot easier instead of like just trying to map the pictures together. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm getting there. It's good oh, that like a lot of these words are Spanish because it makes more sense to me, anyways. Isla, isla. I can read that. It makes perfect sense. It must be Spanish blood. Spanish blood. Spanish blood. We have decided to go straight down and uh, get to Benitos. Yeah, we're going. To, they're, they're also considered the Pacific Islands, so we're going to go there. It's, it's a little bit lower uh, below the weather, and uh, just better anchorages altogether. Warmer water, warmer temperatures. Just, I think that's going to be a better decision in the long run. So we all went into action. I mean, we got this boat ready to rock and roll within 
probably 30 minutes here. It's quite impressive. We're getting our we're getting our stuff down. When uh, once everything was set up, the crew was left to do their own thing, and I think I lost them to um, Angry Birds. So there's Shannon. There's Sean. They're both playing Angry Birds. They, they they've rediscovered that game. No, but it's super mellow out here. It's beautiful. I don't mind this kind of sailing bite but at all. Whoop, whoop, 2,000 subscribers. Wow, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. For more information, please visit svprism.com. And if you want to become a patron, head on over to our Patreon page. And like always, fair winds and following seas. Next time on SV Prism. Prism and her crew learn just how useless sea maps and Mexican charts can be as they head into the Pacific Islands. See here that this is where the chart says the island is, but the island itself is actually over here. We test out our trading capabilities for some fresh Mexican lobster. Book? You want a book? Any? And find out that cormorants are bad fishing partners. So there's the cormorant. He wants the fish so bad. Oh! 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 oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> we suit up and finally get in for some much needed underwater interaction. We have officially left the states and are back in Mexico. Internet in Mexico is not exactly up to par of the United States, so uploading videos is going to be a little bit more sparse. But fear not, we will do our best to keep you part of our adventure.